what is the En-ROADS simulator and how does it work? En-ROADS is a system dynamics model, a mathematical model built with this methodology that was invented at MIT in the 1950s. More formally, it is a high order, nonlinear differential equation model. It is built in software that's available off the shelf called Vensim, built by Ventana Systems. And it was translated into web assembly via a tool that we built called SD Everywhere. And once it's in web assembly, then it, we can build this interface on it that allows it to be put into your browser so that every time you move a slider, the browser has all the equations that are needed to run that system dynamics model out 110 years, populate all the hundreds of graphs within 60 milliseconds. Pretty cool, huh? That's what En-ROADS is. And so here is the Vensim model itself. So you can see the at least the graphic representation of the stocks and flows and constants and variables and feedback loops here in the structure that governs the electricity capacity, of different types. You have the stock that's under development and under construction. Then over time, it becomes actual electric supply capacity and then the retirement rate. This is what the model looks like in its graphical form. But then if you click on an equation, each of these stocks reveals the actual equation, the integral of these two flows, for example, and the initial value, etc. So this is what the Vensim model looks like uh, underneath the hood. And as you can imagine, we have our own um, control panels and other guides that get us to different parts of the model in Vensim. So how does the model actually run? Well, it starts in 1990 and we have set initial conditions for all of the important big factors in the model. How many people there are on earth? It's 5.3 billion. What's the GDP per capita? What's the concentration of carbon in the atmosphere? How much infrastructure is there for coal, oil, gas, renewables? How much energy does it take to deliver a dollar of value, the energy intensity? What's the methane concentration? What is the radiative forcing in the climate? What is the temperature? What is the sea level rise and ocean acidification? All of those, we find data set 1990. And then the equations in the model will govern what happens over the next 45 days. The energy intensity in two big sectors of transportation and buildings and industry is actually falling a little bit, governed a little bit by energy prices that are out there. It's going to set energy demand. There are prices for extracted fuels, coal, oil, gas, delivered fuels, and then electricity generation from all the sources all have prices that will change a little bit based on what happened in that last 45 days. If there's more generation built, there's a progress ratio that says that those prices will be coming down a little bit. So there are all this investment in capacity and utilization uh, that determine emissions from the energy sectors. But there's also emissions 45 days later, new emissions from what's happening with deforestation emissions. And that sets emissions into the atmosphere. And there's also removals into the biomass, into the ocean, into deeper levels of ocean governed by this, and then actually more <laughs> emissions out of the ocean and out of the biomass in the carbon cycle. All of that happens. We also independently, these 45 days, years, days later with methane emissions and removals so that or dissipation so that you have the concentration of those nitrous oxide and F gases uh, that'll set a new level of radiative forcing, a new temperature, new sea level rise. Then the model steps forward another 45 days and another, and another, and another, through 1990, through the 90s, all the way out 110 years, step by step. The equations govern how all of this plays out. Now, mind you, there are several external factors. Volcanoes, we actually took the UN population data, 
deforestation emissions historical we took from the outside, uh, several recessions, 2008 and 2020, some of the other forcings we took as external shocks into the system. But generally, the behavior of the model is driven by the feedback processes and the accumulations as governed by those equations over 110 years. That's the baseline. Now, mind you, in a different scenario, you could say, well, I'm going to set a carbon price here in 2030. I'm going to set a carbon price of $50 a ton over 10 years. So 2030, what did I say? Like $5 a year. So in that, in 2030, there would be a difference and the carbon price would go up just a little bit in those 45 days. And that will affect a whole variety of things. It'll affect the cost of energy, therefore investments in energy efficiency in the model. It'll affect uh, in a logit function, a different cost means there'll be different investments in coal, oil, gas, and renewables and nuclear, et cetera. And so something would be a little bit different with that carbon price. And then from 2030 on, things will play out differently and therefore we'll get different results and therefore different graphs. But the basic idea, start in 1990, have equations that govern step-by-step step every 45 days how things play out. I hope this was helpful. Go get them.